Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6. We are making a hell of a good time here as our good friend Sundia Takita. Now, I'm not even sure if I should really continue to buy great works of writing. I mean, they're kind of cool, but I don't know if they're necessary. I guess in a way, it's a way for me to convert my gold per turn into something useful. So I suppose there's no reason not to buy up all the books that I can. Um, because it does get me a lot of gold, a lot of culture, a lot of production. But I think currently I'm most interested in getting the hell out of this war. I'm kind of sick of this war. I'm tired of it. I'm bored of it. I want out. I've lost interest in fighting a war with this player. That's really just kind of like the position I'm in here. Dido being exceptionally annoying. Um, we do need to pick up medieval fairs for that governor title. And shortly we will be able to start optimizing for the religion victory that I have decided to pivot to. We have a pretty good religion victory set up here. Plus two faith for each city following the religion and holy orders. As well as we are in a Exodus the Evangelist's golden age. Which will work out quite nicely for us here in the course of the game. I'm going to retreat with this. Archer, I'll keep blasting this district. I need to break this district. We will break it soon. I have a bunch of Mandacalo cavalry in the position. You step forward, shoot him, and shoot him. And we should be able to get rid of that horseman inside our territory here relatively quickly. All right, we we'll blast this district. I think we can kill this crossbowman if I use a full health Mandacalo on it. We can blast this district as well. Perfect. It should be gone in the next turn or two. And we can get rid of this horseman at long last been a long time coming. So here comes the moment of truth. There is the gentle eruption. Medieval Fairs is completed. We can go ahead and promote Moksha, a patron saint, which will allow our apostles to get two promotions when they are created. We really need to get suzerainty of Yerevan. So I'm going to go ahead and take Amani and put her into Yerevan. Because if we can get Yerevan, if we can get control of them, that will completely turn the game around for us. So let's go ahead and start mass purchasing apostles from this city and we get them super cheap 170 gold now here's the thing or sorry 170 faith we get a huge discount to our faith purchasing and our gold purchasing i don't think we need the gurdwara in here we can just hard build it in fact we could probably yeah we could probably just hard build it that'll be fine let's go ahead and start faith purchasing apostles each apostle that i get here will have two promotions which is insane super powerful why is this district healing so much how dare it how dare it Right, there we go. We killed that district. Will she take peace now that I've managed to shove her back a little bit? No, she's not willing to take peace. I'm going to have to probably buy a, like two more trebuchets to march into the front line and try to make a difference there. Um, but other than that, there isn't really much we care about in the civic tree anymore. If we're going for a religion victory, we've basically com completed the tree. Like we just, we just don't care that much. It's so like, yeah, this is like we're done. So we're kind of more interested in envoys and gold and all that stuff. One of the best promotions that you can get right here, proselytizer, eliminates 75% of the existing pressure from other religions in the target cities. Literally one of the best ones. Another really good one is debater because it lets you fight a lot. That's quite good. Let's go ahead and go down the apostle train. We got the Gurdwara in Kumbisele. I'd like to get a road going this way. So I'm going to put a trader into Gao to try to trade with Opango so I can kind of trade in this direction. And this city could continue to grow, so we may as well get a granary. Let's get you to fall back to here to level up. We'll come in here. I don't quite have the money. Grandmaster's Chapel is finished soon, so I will be able to faith buy a couple of units. That'll be okay. But I literally can't spend my faith fast enough at this current point in the game. That will change as time goes on. It will change quite a lot. Um, but there's banking, so that's another good way for us to spend our production to get more gold. Second promotion on this guy. So proselytizer plus translator. This is what I call like the tactical nuke. Um, it's super, super powerful. This guy has debater. A good one to take is either translator or orator. I think translator is a little bit better. Let's see. Translator. Yep, that's a good one. And what will you take? Uh, neither of these are very good, but we'll just take them anyway. And my apostles are slowly increasing. Every time I buy an apostle, their price goes up by about 10 faith, which is a decent amount, but it's a manageable amount. So the best one here is pilgrim. So I'm going to send this guy to go walk beside Halong Bay. It's nice that I have Halong Bay here, actually. Okay, both these guys need to go step, step near Halong Bay. Unfortunate. I don't like that usually. Niani has got like giga low amenities, by the way, uh, because I'm caught in this stupid war. But I'm now officially spending more faith per turn than I'm earning on Apostles, which is always fun. Ooh, I should totally plug in the card that lets me... Can I get this kill? Boom, perfect. I should totally plug in the card that gives me more combat strength on my Apostles. Martyr. Martyr is fine. I can like slam him into someone and get him killed. Uh, another Martyr. Not my favorite. Lots of Martyrs this turn, which I don't love. Martyr is not my favorite 
promotion. I've said that a couple of times now, but it's because it requires you to actually lose your unit in order to benefit from it. So it takes a very long time to pay off and it requires you to use your unit suboptimally. Okay, Pilgrim. God, Orator and Pilgrim. Is there, where are our natural wonders? Okay, there's Uluru here. I could use that, Pamakala. We've almost got Suzerainty of Yerevan. Can I pick up any more quick... Yeah, there's a free envoy here in Mercenary, so I'll quickly grab that. We can get Suzerainty of Yerevan, which will give us much more selection when it comes to our Apostles. We want to dodge Opango, I think, and we're going to try to push towards the Aztecs. If we can wipe out the Aztec religion early, I think that's our biggest competitor. Let's have a look at the religion map mode. Sorry, not the religion map mode, the overall victory. Who's making the most faith? The Dutch, the Aztec, and then the Cree, and then me. Right, so we've got our work cut out for us here. Right, let's get those free extra spreads. He's up to eight, and I can promote him with Martyr. I mean, I guess Martyr is fine. I don't love Martyr. She still wants a stupid amount of gold per turn. Um, so what I need to do is to now step in and attack her city. Um, and that's going to require me to sell off, like, resources and buy another trebuchet to make that happen which is super annoying. Mostly it's a super annoying because I'm dealing with massively negative amenities from it. And the Aztecs are keeping me from buying luxuries because every time he does this, he breaks my game. Let's convert KTY. I actually regret converting it, although I did get error score. I didn't mean to step this apostle here. That's actually a big loss because he's going to get crushed by that courser. I forgot that I was at war with them. Just a silly little mistake. Goddamn Aztecs just crash my game every time I buy luxuries. How infuriating. Ugh. Okay, I've got a debater here. I could smash this guy with my debater. I'll hit him with you first, and then I'll break him. Boom. Got the kill. Not really important to get the kill, but I should probably follow this up with a couple of gurus. Let's get two gurus to be able to heal my big old swarm of religious units. I need to dodge this nonsense. This whole Opango thing. I don't know how this city's holding loyalty. It's kind of baffling, actually. <laughs> um, what? Just to put in perspective the apostle train that I've got going here. Um, every green tile is, uh, is an apostle. So you can see that the, the train is beginning and they're going to swarm across the land, spreading the good word, the bird. No, who's declaring war on me? I don't want to be at war anymore. It's not my favorite way. I want to win the game through peace. Okay, at least we can get Rajar Todal Mar. Well, thank you, good sir. That'll be an extra little trade route for me. Uh, let's take Susan T of Yerevan. That's big. Now, I believe our future apostles should be able to choose from any promotion, which will be extremely, extremely handy. But if you're wondering why people don't like the religious victory, it's because it looks like this. You just, you move a lot of units around for a very long time, and then the game ends. Um, it's a bit like military, but less interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that of all the experiments in Civ 6, like to like bring the gameplay into a new era, um, I feel like the religious victory experiment was the good was the only one that really failed, I feel. And when I say failed, I don't mean like it was unsuccessful. I mean it just it it just doesn't really work very well. That's what I mean by failure. Alright, blast the city. You can't even reach the city. God damn it. Step forward, surround. We've got to build a really good surround on this city. You can't even hit the city from here, can you? That's annoying. If I stay fortified, you will be able to tank another hit and then I'll retreat. Can I sell stuff? Need to sell a little bit more stuff. Buy another trebuchet to bring up to the front line. Time to move the giga swarm of um, apostles here. Oh, do I have a debater nearby? Nope, but I think I can catch these guys off guard. And remember, every one of these religious units that I kill is one less religious spread that my enemies can perform. So it is quite important to actually get these kills. Plus, it'll also cause spreading in the nearby area. So the best ones are proselytizer and the the one that eliminates pressure and the one that does triple pressure. Those those are the two best combined together. Um, trade with your own cities, gain extra gold. It's quite nice. A little bit of, a little bit of gold on top of uh, things. I'm going to make sure that I maintain suzerainty of Yerevan because that seems to be the most important one for my victory. And the Giga Apostle train is well underway. I do still believe that the Religion victory is easily one of the least interesting victories. I do need to plug in the religious orders card to get plus five combat strength on my religious units, which will allow me to win these combats a little bit more effectively. All right, good job. You managed to survive, retreat, blast the city, blast the city, pillage here, surround. Um, the city is like impossible to get a siege on, but it's not important. We just need to threaten her to where she's like, oh, maybe I should peace you out. And you can see her, her demands for peace are going down as we damage the city. Right, let's go ahead and promote here, kill there. Step here, step here, boom, boom, move here, move there. 
And this is like this is like 80 percent of a religious victory, <laughs> although that does mean that it's a really great opportunity to get into the churn. We do a little churning. Any churners in the chat? Yeah. So you want you want proselytizer and translator. These two combined, it's like auto win. I'm pretty sure these two guys could convert the entirety of Sumeria because they, they take one charge each to convert a city and they each have five charges. So just absurdly absurdly powerful you're a debater they're on holy ground we don't want to attack yet because they could just retreat somewhere safely and heal so we want to let them attack us and then we can counterattack. it's uh, the most efficient way that i have found to do things is to let the other player be the attacker and then every now and again into your apostle wave you should sprinkle in a couple of debaters and the great thing is um debaters don't have to be recruited from the moksha city because they're never really going to be using their spread charges but regardless catapult takes a bit of damage it should be pretty close to promoting if we keep attacking the city we blast the city and blast the city uh, we still have major defeats but we can keep you know pillage it's kind of a fun thing that we can do is uh pillage away on the city pillage i saw a really interesting game actually on the save subreddit but somebody who was playing Mongolia and went for a one city, one district science victory where they just built cavalry and pillaged the world for all of their tech. And it was a really interesting looking game. We might try that one day. Not today, but one day. So this man at arms really wants to get a pillage on me. It's kind of annoying. Unfortunately, it doesn't count as a barb, so I can't just take the barb killing promotion and like merc him. See, so yeah, I think our, our main goal should be to take out the big religious civs. So the Aztecs, the Cree. Georgia and the Netherlands. If we can take out all those guys, so Aztecs first, then the Cree, then the Netherlands, and then Georgia, and then the remaining, like the Apostle train behind, they can get to work on like converting Sumeria or converting Dido. These are like lower importance. Uh, Coupe as well. But the most important thing is that our Giga Swarm makes its way towards the people who are actually going to like fight back against our religion victory and because once you eradicate someone's religion it's very hard to get it back so that should be our main objective is to eradicate the the competing religions it's a, it's a little bit survival of the fittest here when it comes to religion in Civ 6 and sometimes the fittest one is the one that kills everyone else <laughs> apostles are now costing 430 but we still have over 3000 faith in the bank and our faith is continuing to increase how is he able to attack me from the water but i bet you i won't be able to attack him into the water guarantee it how annoying let's see here newly built districts by me i'll take that 100 percent grievances towards me please can i actually attack into the water oh i can but it didn't really work in my favor which sucked well this is a really annoying choke point that has no road through it you know what we need we need an apostle promotion for building roads okay Everywhere the Apostle steps, a road appears. It's like the... Call it like the less worn path or something. Okay, if I shoot here, that'll break the walls and the city will no longer be able to hurt my catapults, which is the perfect situation for me. Um, so I can just slowly chip away at the city. Might even raise it if I feel like being an evil man. I'm getting something out of this. You're paying me. Honestly, I'm tempted to kill the Aztec just so I can buy luxuries off the AI. Huge damage here. Big chunks. So she wants peace, but I'm refusing it until I feel like she can reasonably threaten my army that's surrounded her city, which she currently can't do. She can't do anything about me doing this. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go ahead and make sure we threaten the city just so she feels really insecure. Gurdwara completed in Todeni. What's going to be our final district? I guess we're going for a three district build. I suppose we can probably just get probably just get a Diplo Quarter here. It's not super important, but it gives us better control of the envoys, in particular getting these guys up to the max rank. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. Um... This guy's got a debater promotion. Let's hit him once. Can we get the kill? I need to hit him. Tw I need to hit him again. And then if I kill him, we put a bit of pressure on his religion. I need those gurus up. They're coming, I guess. So I find the trick with religious units is to take your wounded and just put them off to the side and essentially put them into storage until you get a guru up. Speaking of gurus, I should get another couple gurus going. I wish religious units were a little bit more reliable on long-term deployments. Like if I were to just like click on an enemy city and be like, hey, go there. I wish they were a little bit more reliable at actually getting there. Um, but they tend to get lost and stuck along the way. All right, let's blow up this city. Boom, boom. Uh, we are going to keep it, but we're going to trade it back next turn to see if she'll take it. Now, she might be super mad about that, but I don't care. And I'm waving my hands in the air. It would be nice if I didn't have to play a game of Ultimate Chicken with these, you know, free cities roaming around here there's currently 33 apostles on the map that is absurd we have almost completely spent our faith reserves though we're starting to deplete which is a good thing honestly because it means we're getting close to the point where you know we're, it's all just about micro then so we step this guy forward 
There's an apostle in the city, which is a problem. However, one click should completely convert the city. I'm going to tell him, hey, listen, dude, I got to convert the world. So already eradicated 100% of the pressure that was holding the city. And then this guy has a triple spread. So boom, we then convert it. So that's why the combination of those two promotions, like that was across two different people, right? We had proselytizer and then we had translator. If you have them both in the same guy, you can do that in one click. Now, technically the most efficient way to do it, if we're being super technical here, it might be to like take one of those promotions and then a promotion spread so that you get more spreads of each. But I you know it just... I maybe when you're not in the golden age but when you're in the golden age I find you combine the two together and you're good to go right we're setting up for a big ass heel over here Dido Milady, I will give you back your city but you gotta pay me the big bucks okay perfect finally I got my peace I don't have to deal with the war anymore god that was infuriating um so I can redirect a few apostles to go clear her out now back half of the train shouldn't take us too much so he's trying to reclaim his religion the Aztec is using this apostle but it's not gonna work for him because she's demanding that I move my troops but in order for me to move my troops you need to give me open borders um, and then I can move my troops off your border I mean, it's gonna take me a while I feel like you're not giving me enough time here it's very clogged up with religious units here very, 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 very clogged. Let's do this. Any debaters in the area? No, you're a translator. You're a martyr. Can you step in? We can get the assault and attack. Every kill we get is one less religious unit we have to fight. Can we get this kill here? It would be huge if we could. Boom, big kill. That's a huge pressure swing for us across this empire. Let's get this kill as well. Secure every kill that we can. God, what an annoying clog. How, wait, wait, how is he? Is he just recruiting? I guess he's just recruiting. But yeah, we've managed to convert Chalco and we'll continue to work on other cities. It's really annoying that you can't attack into a city with a religious unit. Like I find that to be um, a frustrating roadblock in my religion game. That's a debater, I think. Why is his base strength so high? That's the holy city. Okay, yeah, we need, we need debaters to get in there. Should have brought more debaters on the front line. I brought a little bit too many of the non-debaters. It's okay, we can make it work. Why does left click move units? I wish it wasn't so. I clicked with my left mouse button and off he did go. But yeah, I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.